Welcome to Pandemic Apprentice, ladies and gentlemen, in this very special Academy Award edition. This pandemic is a multi-billion dollar business and I want a piece of it. There's an ancient Chinese curse that you might live in interesting times. And that surely we have, boys and girls. And the Mandarin character for Crisis is a unique marriage of two Mandarin characters, danger and opportunity, to remind us that wherever there is danger, there is always opportunity. And fortune always favors both. So be bold. You have been chosen as a project management team to develop a solution for a pandemic pathogen that has been attributed to over 6 million deaths worldwide, exceeding even Adolf Hitler in death counts, a bit of an overachiever, which includes almost 1 million American lives leading the world in fatalities. We are number one. And tragically, most of whom have been the elderly in nursing homes, over 75% according to the CDC. A known risk from the very beginning, according to the WHO. But today, there is a new product, the Pfizer, the Moderna, and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And perhaps you have been vaccinated. But with a recent Academy Award winning performance that has dominated the atmosphere, sucking up all the oxygen like a napalm blast. And gee, don't we all just love napalm in the morning. Let's consider how you will be evaluated in this special edition Pandemic Apprentice Project Management Simulation. Will you win the award for Best Actor? Will you be forced to resign within a week? Will you be fired? Hello, my name is Major Mike Webb. I am a pro-life Christian conservative for U.S. Congress and Virginia's 8th Congressional District. Running head-to-head -head as an independent against multi-millionaire Congressman Don Byam, 13th richest man in Congress, who had in December captured the endorsement of Planned Parenthood, not unsurprisingly, making us, on all evidence, diametrically opposed opposites on the issue of abortion. So if that is your, you know, panic button issue, you know, if you're for abortion, vote for Don Bay. If you're against abortion, vote for Mike Webb. On Monday, March 28th, the comic actor Will Smith issued the following statement. My behavior at last night's Academy Awards was unacceptable and inexcusable. Jokes at my expense were part of the job. But a joke about Jada's medical condition was too much for me to bear. And I reacted emotionally. He was not a scientist at that moment. As reported by Variety and Entertainment Magazine, Will Smith facing possible expulsion or suspension after he assaulted Chris Rock during last Sunday's Oscars telecast has instead resigned from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Little evolutionary pressure. The move comes as the actor is embroiled in the gravest crisis of his career and as the organization behind the Academy Awards has struggled more evolutionary pressure in its attempts to deal with the fallout from the altercation. In a statement, Smith called his action shocking painful and inexcusable, apparently uncontrollable, and said that he will accept any additional consequences that the Academy's Board of Governors deems appropriate. What kind of consequences do they give him if he has left the organization? Give us our Oscar back? And as many are aware, I was the childhood protege to a legendary civil rights criminal defense veteran. And for the last few years, I have developed quite a reputation in the courts, incurring the ire of the Progressive Voters Guy for, among other things, being an infamous participant in the Red Rose Rescue, a pro-life effort, and further earning the reputation, especially during the current public health crisis, as being the scourge of the Virginia Bar Association. 
for a total of three litigations in opposition to the government response to COVID-19 that have over the past two years gone all the way to the United States Supreme Court. We're still fighting. Back on our way to Texas to fight some more. But for the next few moments, we will be addressing a topic of popular interest in the news related to the incident involving actors Will Smith and Chris Rock. You loved him as a kid, you trusted him as a mother. During the 94th Academy Awards ceremony that had early been described by some pundits as black on black violence, which according to Variety, Smith had also acknowledged that his actions overshadowed other winners at the 94th Academy Awards, but within the, within the novel context for our discussion of the abortion debate, because there are many parallels and this is an issue with which I have a rather extensive litigation history. Uh, Dr. Jerome Adams can talk about his feelings as a black man when two black men strike each other on the stage. I can use this opportunity to talk about abortion. You don't like it? Look at another video. First, it has been acknowledged by the former star of television who had delighted audiences for years as the funky Fresh Prince who had been sent to live with his aunt. Yeah. California to escape the dangers of the inner city environment that West Philly actually lived in West Philly long ago, had characterized his motivation as an expression of love for his wife, with whom there's an interesting history, but it was love for his wife. The actress Jada Pinkett, star of Set It All, about whom the comic actor Chris Rock had delivered an extemporaneous book in the crack house. And he had delivered an ex Contemporaneous and apparently unscripted joke in reference to her medical condition of alopecia, an autoimmune condition that results in the loss of hair. Comparing her to Demi Moore in a rendition of G.I. Jane 2. So examining these facts from a legal basis, not being emotional, because we know that that might cause us to stand up on the stage and slap someone, especially if they're black. The Best Actor Award star has essentially asserted that he had physically accosted another individual in an act of a type of extended self-defense, defending the honor of his lawfully wedded spouse. Somewhat like a crime of passion. He's unable to control his emotion. Angry black man. And what is wrong with this particular argument for, from a strictly legal point of view? Did Smith's conduct after the fact do anything to prevent the harm that had been alleged to have befallen his wife? By slap you, is that going to erase what you did? Obviously not. Rather, his actions at this point of striking the MC for the Oscars on nationally televised awards program can only be characterized as an action performed in retaliation. And under the law, particularly in workplace discrimination cases, as well as government whistleblower cases, the courts have, with which I have some value on both counts, the courts have assisted in developing the law to determine how to identify an action that is performed in retaliation by laying out the simple formula articulated in the case read the MSPB, which defines the time decision rule. That is, if an adverse action, in this case Will Smith, open hand slapping Chris Rock across the face, and according to witnesses, leaving a reddened mark across the victim's cheek, occurs within a reasonable time of a protected activity, which we shall describe here for only illustrative purposes for now as Chris Rock's free speech. He wasn't paid extra for his extemporaneous remarks. Then a presumption arises that that offensive conduct was performed in retaliation. In fact, he repeated, keep his wife's name out of his mouth. And this rule serves as what attorneys would describe as a burden shifting mechanism because it shifts that burden of proof, which you may be familiar with from movies, from the victim making the charges of retaliation back to the defendant to provide a good cause justification to explain why his actions should not be viewed as retaliatory. 
by clear and convincing evidence in a civil case. So clearly on these facts, there is at least a presumption that Will Smith's actions were not performed in defense of anyone, but rather until he can articulate some affirmative defense, it is viewed in the courts as an act of vengeful retaliation. He got up, went across the aisle, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, went down the aisle, up to the stage, hopped on the stage and slapped the MC in the face and then returned to his seat and issued threatening comments while being apparently told that he should leave. Interesting legal facts. Now, taking this into the realm of pro-life activism, those engaged in sidewalk counseling, generally in an act of religious devotion and free exercise of their sincerely held faith beliefs, to the ire of people like the Huffington Post and the Washington Post are performing what may also fairly be described as an act of love, Christian love. And we all like Christian love until we close churches. And uh, certainly, unlike the conduct that found Will Smith attempting to redirect the attention that had been focused upon him to others in the entertainment industry of their achievements. Stop putting the spotlight on me. You should really be thinking about those other people while I try to get away. And allow the Academy to get back to the incredible work it does to support creative creativity and artistry and film. Sidewalk counseling, or even a Red Rose Rescue, attempting to enter an abortion facility to engage in person-to-person, Christian-to-Christian, brother-to-neighbor, pro-life counseling, could be described as retaliatory in any way, shape or form? Could it be? You can, care, you can compare this to other forms of civil disobedience, as integration of lunch counters during the civil rights movement. I'm going to take my black body into a white only establishment so that I can feed myself. So we definitely have some self-love going on. But hopefully when you do this you're going to let others go. See it any way you want. Um, other example protests outside the South African embassy during the fight to overturn the apartheid regime. I'm going to stand outside to the uh, Danny Glover, go inside until you arrest me for trespass so everyone can see that apartheid is wrong. Jane Father, most recently during the pandemic, got herself arrested. But for which a property owner will probably bring a criminal charge of trespass has happened to Jane Potter, good friend of Don Bayer, which is generally just a misdemeanor offense. No big deal. So, since at least for now, even after reports of a red mark left on his face, no bandages, no broken bones, but a red mark on his face, Chris Marks has stated that he has no plans to bring charges against Will Smith for assault and battery not aggravated assault and battery. He didn't pull out a weapon and decide to pop a cap in his butt. Let's consider within the pro-life activism context whether it might be argued that Will Smith could be charged with the misdemeanor offense of trespass. We have argued to the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office that he certainly can based upon the facts. We'll see what the district attorney does with that. Those who have been following the legal commentary may have become familiar with the unique creature of California's state criminal law described as a wobbler event. All in the papers all this week. Which essentially means that a particular criminal offense might be charged under different provisions in the penal code depending upon the circumstances and the victims involved. While California is certainly unique in providing this legal term of art, that is a wobbler offense, it is not an anomaly at all in the law. And to give an easy example with which most people are generally familiar, we could use the criminal offense of one person killing another, which could be 
described in court as murder. First degree, second degree, third degree. Felony murder or the accidental killing of another during the commission of a felony. You were committing a felony, you should have known that it was inherently dangerous. And so when you began that act, then uh, you're going to be charged with felony murder. A voluntary manslaughter, like occurred apparently aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt. Or even an involuntary manslaughter, as Alec Baldwin has claimed occurred on the movie set. From a victim point of view, the adverse consequences of unlawful conduct remains the same. Dead is dead. That doesn't change. But the factors that contributed to that result are assigned different consequences for the culpable part. Based on a variety of factors. State of mind, who you happen to kill, etc. You don't understand that? You're fired. As in California, beautiful sunny California, there is even a criminal offense in the penal code that is described as aggravated trespass. Codified under California Penal Code 601, which creates a state felony charge, similar in the character to the felony charge that is associated with a violation of the Freedom of Access to Clinic Entrances or FACE Act, a federal crime enacted during the Clinton administration in 1994 after the tragic killings of Drs. Tiller and Gunn in 1993. And Aggravated trespass is defined in this way under the California Penal Code. Any person is guilty of trespass who makes a credible threat to cause serious bodily injury to another person with the intent to place that other person in reasonable fear for his or her safety or the safety of his or her immediate family and who does any one of the following this also has to be present conjunctive one within 30 days of the threat unlawfully enters the residence or real property contiguous to the residence of the person threatened to be next door without lawful purpose and with the intent to execute the threat against the target of the threat or two within 30 days of the threat knowing that the place is the threatened person's workplace go to your job unlawfully enters the workplace of the person threatened and carries out an act or acts to locate the threatened person ask the guard where you are within the workplace premises without a lawful purpose Tell him that you, you want to give him his lunch. He forgot his lunch. And with the intent to execute the threat against the target of the threat. So, like the... Or you can say, I want to tell him what time it is. That's a lawful purpose. Of course, when you find him, you may not tell him exactly what time it is. So, like the prior explanation regarding acts of retaliation, the California Penal Code sets out a 30-day window to define that which is to be considered a reasonable time. Makes it much easier than the courts. They say reasonable time, what's a reasonable time? In California, it's 30 days. And interestingly, drawing back to the references to acts performed in self-defense, under the California Penal Code, discharge of aggravated trespass cannot occur if the victim has entered the home of the aggravated person. If Chris Rock knows that he has an issue between himself and Will Smith, it would probably not be reasonable to go over to his house to place yourself in the position to become a victim. And a violation of Penal Code 601 in California is a felony punishable by imprisonment or alternatively punishable by as a misdemeanor by imprisonment in county jail not exceeding one year or by the fine not exceeding two thousand dollars or by both that fine and imprisonment because in california even in california we will recognize some form of a right to stand your ground so do not 
do not again. Go to the home of someone who is your enemy. If you know that he might kill you, love your enemies notwithstanding. So let's examine this potential charge against actor Will Smith for his conduct at the Academy Awards by the elements of the offense that would have to be established beyond a reasonable doubt in a court to convict of a crime. That's a constitutional question. Any person, even Will Smith, who is guilty of trespass, to which we shall return for the elements in a moment, who makes a credible threat to cause serious bodily injury to another person, and of report, Will Smith did cause an injury, leaving a visible mark, apparently, on the face of Chris Rock but with the intent to place that other person in reasonable fear for his or her safety. And there are reports that Will Smith, after striking Chris Rock, did in fact return to his seat, but had continued throughout the ceremony shouting threatening comments to Chris Rock on the stage, being approached by Denzel Washington, Tyler Perry, and others to ask him to remove himself from the premises. So, the question becomes, what is a serious bodily injury that might give rise to a reasonable fear for the safety of a person of his or her immediate family? Not just messing up my award ceremony in California. And it should not be surprising that in California, where apparently for months the former athlete and actor O.J. Simpson had apparently stalked and trolled his wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, for months prior to her death, the penal code actually defines these elements under the penal code provisions that criminalize stalking. And in California, a credible threat means a verbal or written threat including that performed through the use of an electronic communication device or a threat implied by a pattern of conduct or a combination of verbal, written, or electronically communicated statements and conduct made with the intent made with the intent to place the person that is the target of the threat in reasonable fear for his or her safety or the safety of his or her family and made another and with the apparent ability to carry out the threat so as to cause the person who is the target of the threat to reasonably fear for his or her safety or the safety of his or her family. So you're not going to be, again, telling someone who you think is going to kill you to come to your house. The present incarceration in California of a person making that threat shall not be a bar to prosecution under this section. Why? Because at some point, this guy may get out. In fact, considering our history with coronaviruses, he might well escape. And constitutionally protected activity in free speech is not included within the meaning of a credible threat. And this is not a provision that is recognized under the FACE Act. So be careful with what you do and say. And under the stalking statute, whether you are a st- are stalking in person, stalking by telephone, stalking by email, stalking by letter, Pony Express, or on social media, any person who willfully, maliciously, and repeatedly follow or willfully and maliciously harasses another person and who makes a credible threat with the intent to place that person in a reasonable fear for his or her safety or the safety of his or her immediate family. Immediate family. Uncles, aunts, nephews, grandma doesn't count. In reasonable fear of his or her safety is guilty of a crime. Stalking punishable by imprisonment in a county jail, but not more than one year. Go down there with Otis the Drunk in Mayberg. Or by a fine of not more than $1,000. Or by both that fine and imprisonment. Or by imprisonment in the state prison. So essentially, for the most part, stalking rises only to the level of a misdemeanor in California. 
unless you just get really, really wild with it, they may put you in state prison. But for an aggravated trespass, an aggravated trespass, can it be said that Chris Rock had received a serious bodily injury? That would be a tall order. That would be a tall order. Chris Cooper. Maybe. But, uh, who knows? That would be a tall order. And pretty difficult to establish. But could it be argued by the prosecution that this obviously enraged and impassioned assailant possessed an ability to exact serious bodily injury upon Chris Rock? He had to be physically removed by several security guards. Tossed through a window like Eddie Murphy in Beverly Hills Cop. No. Is he that kind of intimidating black man? And in California, whether or not that serious bodily injury had occurred or not is not essential to the charge for the felony crime of aggravated trespass. But the prosecutor need only establish the prime of basic case that a person like Will Smith had essentially brandished an ability, like a weapon, to cause such harm so as to place a victim like Chris Rock in reasonable apprehension of grave bodily harm or death. Bill Cosby has a wonderful joke. Young man comes over to date his daughter. He asks him whether or not uh, his polishing his gun makes his daughter's date feel uncomfortable. That would be brandishing. But now, compare this provision for aggravated trespass with Faith Act that imposes a strict liability felony charge. That means no affirmative defenses, regardless. If you did it, you're done. You're going to jail. Against a person who only blocks the access to an abortion facility. But I was waiting for the bus. Makes no difference. Do they possess a demonstrated ability to cause grave bodily harm to another? Or has the FACE Act removed your presumption of innocence when you exercise your faith outside a abortion cell? Do you really believe that even a group of nuns are going to kick your butt? And maybe you need to spend more time at the gym or in spin classes. But that is the law that had been enacted by a Democrat Congress against basically religious people performing their acts of love and face felony charges, heavy fines, and maybe even imprisonment if they block the access to of a woman to an abortion facility. In fact, not long after the Oklahoma City bombing, there was a case of a man who parked a rider truck outside the entrance of an abortion facility. Essentially a free speech argument that may actually prevail in a California court if it was a an aggravated trespass. Act of free speech. But you would not have that under the base act. If you did that in front of an abortion bill, as he found out, end up with max fines in prison. And still that is the law that Don Byer, endorsed by Planned Parenthood, Tim Kaine, Ralph Northam, Mark Herring, Christian Zoll, and even Justin Wilson, the mayor of Alexandria, support. Trying to start off abortion provider appreciation day. And until March 7th, when the Supreme Court had been presented a case of first impression, the first time, the provision for similar protections under the Base Act for persons whose access to a place of worship might be blocked had been raised on appeal all the way to the Supreme Court. It was assumed that the First Amendment rights to free exercise of religion were at least as equal to a woman's purported right to have an abortion and kill her baby. But the Supreme Court, at least for now, has decided that a right to an abortion subordinates your freedom of religion. And that was decided by a conservative majority court. That's my This briefing is unclassified, as you were. My name is Major Mike Webb. By God, I am running for U.S. Congress this year. Resolve to do the right thing. And we shall make America great again. Honest. Carry on.
This advertisement was authorized by Mike Webb.